Hi, my name's Jane Cleland. Last year I lost my daughter Jessica to suicide. She suicided due to cyberbullying. When someone commits suicide, they're not thinking of the harm that they're going to cause to their family and friends. It's not a deliberate um, act to hurt anyone else. All they're doing is trying to end their own perceived pain. They don't get to see the result of what happens in that you, your whole life is thrown into turmoil. Your ability to remember things, to concentrate on things, to feel that you can make it through from one day to the next, that all just blurs in together. The people around them just watching like my husband, my other daughter and all our interactions together. Sometimes we're too careful of each other's feelings. Other times you just, you don't care. You've just bulldozed through anyone. And it's the irrational thoughts that you're never going to be able to live a normal life again. And it's really hard getting yourself back to work to concentrate I mean, I started out just doing two half days. I now do three full days, but I used to do four full days. But I can't see myself doing that because the concentration that it takes is extremely draining because the whole time you're trying to block out your grief and that takes up a lot of energy. I've seen my daughter struggling to finish her university degree. It's taken everything she's got and she's very strong. And my husband, he, he finds it hard to do his work as well. He's a shift worker. He finds night shifts incredibly hard now. It's, if someone is bullying you, if you can find someone to talk to, you take the power away from that bully because most bullies rely on you not telling anyone. They think that you'll be too upset or embarrassed, ashamed to let someone else know what's happening. But if you can just find that one person to let know that takes the power away from the bully. I mean, in our case, it's very frustrating because our bullies are still out there walking around. Nothing's been done because our laws aren't strong enough. But we don't want other families to have to go through what we've gone through. So if you're in that position, find someone that you can trust, whether it's a teacher, a friend, parent, auntie, uncle, a stranger even. And if you can let them know what's happening, as I said, it, it demystifies what the bully's doing to you because you've been able to talk up about it. I know there are people that say she shouldn't have bothered looking at her phone or reading her Facebook. She wasn't in the wrong. She enjoyed it for the most times. And the problem was she was a sensitive person and most people want to be liked by everyone. And all she was trying to work out was what had she done that was so terrible that they were and in the coroner's report, it said that's the problem with cyberbullying is that she can go and reread those messages time and time again. And unfortunately, when you start to get into that mental space, that that's all you see. You don't see reality because if you could see it for what it was, you wouldn't think about it. And there is no reason that you can't find someone to talk to. Suicide really, it's an unfortunate stigma that has been placed on it in the past. And I think that's half the problem is that people don't talk about it. Until it happened to us, we had no idea how common suicide is. Not talking about it certainly hasn't done anyone any good. So perhaps we should consider talking about it, taking away the stigma